back. <laughs> but it's nice. You guys have any questions or concerns about anything before I start stuff? All right. <laughs> I uh, am planning some quicker questions today, so we can see how that goes. So you can, it's not this instant, but you can dig it out if it's way buried. Yes? Uh, it, I use channel 41 for the clicker. The session ID is random, and it'll say was once I open it up. So I don't know the number yet, but I'll give you that. And we'll go through it together and see what happens. I'm sure 97% of us, it'll all work just fine. And the uh, slightly larger percentage of you that haven't registered or activated a license, bought a license, I can see that. So it won't work for you, but you know who you are. Uh, anyway, we'll get there. Uh, has everybody had a chance to see where the superhero paper info is, is at? Anybody not know what I'm talking about? All right. The, did you read the syllabus? Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> then, yeah, uh, yeah. That's you're gonna have a paper due in class. The syllabus explains it, and on WebAssign under the resources, there's files uploaded: the syllabus, a PDF calendar. So, so what we're uh, lecturing on each lecture period, when your homework's due. WebAssign also tells you that and the instructions and, uh, for the superhero paper, and the deadline dates. Because uh, it's not just do it and turn it in. It's like you'll have to give me, uh, an I submit an idea, so I can make sure you're on the right track and don't waste all your time. Then you'll have it peer reviewed. You'll write a rough draft and have it reviewed by someone else, and then ultimately turn it in. It's later, but you can finish that any time you want. It also can be on any topic, physics topic, period. Whether we've covered it or not. So. I also want to, as you'll read in there, tell you now that the idea is to design your own superhero. You know this time. <laughs> uh, the superhero, some people ask, well, can it be a villain instead? Yes. And, and the, the physics involved, they can... They don't have to abide by the laws of physics. They can break the laws of physics as long as you justify and explain how. The whole point is to explain some physics. So whether it's a hero, a villain, it follows the rules to explain how they can do this. Or they break the rules, but you explain why it breaks the rules to show me, basically you're teaching me some concept. I want to see that you can explain it and know what you're talking about. So those are all free game as you're thinking about it. So. Uh, keep reading that. Do you, those that have, do you have questions now about that? Okay. Well, today, I'm look at the calendar. I always do to make sure I, uh, I got lots of these things running through my brain. I even got all the demonstrations ready for next chapter and then realized, oh wait, I'm not even getting to that chapter today. So I look at this, make sure I stay on course. So today is scheduled for chapter three, which we've started on linear motion, acceleration, velocity, speed. Uh, so we'll do more on that. And Friday, uh, we'll get into chapter four. Since we just started chapter four, your homework that will be due this coming Sunday is just on chapter three. It should be visible to you now. On that vein, we're going to start the uh, pre-lecture questions. So I'll probably grab like two questions. I'll d when, when I finish the lecture, I'll know where we're at. And what would be good, I'll go pick them and post those by tonight so that you have all tomorrow and Friday morning to look at those. It'll just be one or two questions that we'll be covering Friday. Does that make sense? So you can't see it right now on WebAssign, but I'll... As soon as I can get to it after class, but by tonight I'll tell you at least. And then hopefully that'll be a regular thing before each lecture. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, that can wait, that can wait. And that's later. So linear motion. That's where we're at. What's the difference between speed and velocity? I heard some mumbling. I was just yeah, direction. Velocity is called a vector. Speed is called a scalar. It just has magnitude. Velocity involves direction too. So if you're changing direction, there's a change in velocity. Not a change in speed, because that's just a magnitude. I mean, not necessarily. But if you're changing direction, you are changing your velocity. If you have a change in velocity, what else can you say that you know? You must be accelerating, because acceleration is a change in velocity. Acceleration is a change in velocity with time. And so as long as you're changing that, there must be an acceleration. I mentioned it. If you're going in a circle, round in a bank, a curve, that's called centripetal acceleration. You've probably heard of that. Uh, we're not covering that as much. It's the same idea. I chose in this course to uh, teach you about motion and whatnot. And then there's like a whole chapter or two on circular motion. And since we're limited in one semester what physics topics we can cover, I chose to skip that one because you actually know everything. It's just the same stuff we're talking about right now with forces and acceleration and inertia. That's all true if you're going in a circle too. <laughs> they just call them something different. They call it angular acceleration and rotational inertia. But the concepts are exactly the same. So any of you that go on in physics, you'll already have all the concepts down. So I was just going to spare you. <laughs> but centripetal acceleration is if you're changing direction. All right. Do you remember the units for acceleration? He's right. How many of you, be honest, show your hand, thought in your head, I don't know. This is how I remember. When, when I forget what units are for, for something, this is how I remind myself. Well, the units are this divided by that. I haven't mentioned this a lot. Uh, I don't avoid equations in this class. It's, it, it has minimal math compared to any other physics class. And I'm not asking you to do many computational where you find numbers, or at least very complicated. There's algebra involved. But I, I love equations. They're the mathematics of science. They're guides to our thinking. They help us understand relationships between different um, measurements or quantities like in this. Acceleration is a change in velocity over a change in time. Do we know what the units of velocity are? Sp you know, speed. Is velocity speed with a direction? Speed. You know, how fast you're going? You can probably come up with that. Meters per second. So that's in meters per second. And it's divided by time which is in seconds. So it's meters per second per second. And that's actually conceptually how I like to think of acceleration. It's how many meters per second we're changing every second. So yeah, you can write that as meters per second per second or meters per second squared. They're all the same thing, so I don't care. Are you more familiar with miles per hour? But that's just miles um, per hour, and what's that a unit of? Trick question. Speed, velocity, or acceleration? Speed. All right. Because it's just position over time. So if you turn that into acceleration, you'd have to be changing your miles per hour. Instead of just going 80 miles an hour, you say you speed up to 100. So it'd be miles per hour per some unit of time, hour. Miles per hour, hour, or miles per hour squared, however you want to think of it. So that's how you play that game. So yeah, if you can't ever in this course remember the units, look at the equation and let it guide you. Maybe you'll remember. Yeah? Technically, no. 
I mean, this, this acceleration is a change of some velocity unit over time, so it could be something like a, a this is position versus time, so let's get funky, right? I, uh, a furlong <laughs> per fortnight velocity per second. I mean, or what the hey, a year. I mean, we can get funky. But position over time per time tells me, ah, this is acceleration. It's wacky. <laughs> and I probably have to convert this to understand what it's talking about. But yeah. It could technically be anything. The standard units in science is what we'll, I'll, we'll be using the most, which is meters and seconds. So it's this one. In case you're wondering, a furlong is, I don't remember how long it is, but it's, it's a fair chunk of feet. And Fortnite's like two weeks. <laughs> it's just fun to say, furlong per fortnight. Say it, you'll believe me. Furlong per fortnight. There, there's, a, there's homework. Go figure out how, how many meters per second is a furlong per fortnight. You might want to convert it to centimeters per second because it's not fast. <laughs> but anyway. So I want to do some demos. This is a uh, vehicle. You can turn it on. You know, battery powered. I'm going to mark it. Got some uh, little poker chips here. And I'm going to attempt to count off an equal time interval, you know, real scientific. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So it starts, let's say that's the front of the car. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007. That's enough. And the good scientist you are, Observations. It's, this is where it started, so after one second, one time interval unit, the second one, the third one, this is just to help you see them better, four or five. What do you observe? What do you notice? That one's getting sad. Yeah. Ah, the distance between them is the same. And that's what scientists do. they like, okay. We're starting with something funky. I don't know where this guy's going with this. <laughs> but you can put pieces together. What, what's changing from here to here? Position. Is the position here different than the position here? Yeah, it's over here now. It's not over there. <laughs> but how about the change in position? From 1 to 2, it, it went about this far. How far did it go from 2 to 3? About this far. Three four. So position is changing with time. We see that. It's moving forward. What do we call that? A change in position over time. Change in position over time is velocity in this direction. So... Can we say something else about the velocity then? We, we know it has a certain speed. Velocity. It's cha the position is changing with time. But the, posi the, the change each second is, is staying the same. So let's, well, what is that? It's about a, a foot. So for uh, roughly, we'll say it's going about one foot every second. So it's, it's, it's going about one foot a second. So is its velocity changing? No. That's right. It's, it's constant. So what do you automatically know about the acceleration? Change in velocity is? So the acceleration has to be zero. It's not accelerating. You're, now you're probably thinking, yeah, duh. It didn't seem to slow down, but it also didn't seem to speed up, right? It just kind of trucks along. <laughs> chink, chink, chink. It just 
happily going along at the same rate. So this is like a graph. If we, you were to gra graph position versus time, what do you think it would look like? Let's graph position with times. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll say it starts right here at some position. After a second, where does it end up? Higher, lower, the same? Higher. It's move, change in position. It moved up to here, maybe. And during the second second, from here to here, how far up did it go? Same amount. It's changing its position by the same amount. So, you get the idea? And yes, sound effects help. So if you draw this, there's the slope of this graph. We're not dealing with graphs ex uh, extensively in this class, but in physics you do a lot. Do you remember the term slope from your math classes? Who doesn't? Oh, that's good. Well, so we can see that the position is changing with time. But it's, it's a straight line. That indicates that it's, constant, it's, it's changing at a constant rate. The velocity is constant. The slope of this actually gives you the velocity. If you remember, slope is rise over run. It's the, so we could go up the rise over the run. The rise over the run. Rise, run, rise, run. Or the change in the vertical axis over the change in the horizontal axis. For those of you that don't remember, which in this case is the change in position over the change in time. We go up a foot every second. One foot, one second. One foot, one second. One foot, one second. So the slope is one foot per second. It tells us the velocity. And it's not changing. Does that make sense? So let's draw acceleration. Or let's one step at a time, Adam. <laughs> let's do velocity. That was position versus time. What would velocity versus time look like? Horizontal? We're at here, here, here. You're pointing somewhere up here? All right, explain it. Why? Why that? Yeah, the velocity is not changing. This would be some value. It, right here is one foot per second. Maybe two is up here, you know? Yeah, and it stays the same. Again, it's straight. Showing it's not changing. That has a slope, doesn't it? It's rise over run. What's the rise? What's the change in the vertical? Zero. It's not going anywhere over the run, over time. So the slope is zero of a horizontal line. What's, what do we know is zero? Don't have it yet. What's what's zero? The acceleration. It's not changing. There's no change in velocity. That's what this graph shows us. So it's just graphs are a nice quick way of seeing these relationships too. If I see a horizontal line, it just tells me now because I've done it a lot. Is that the slope zero? That's not changing. It's constant. And in this case, the slope is acceleration. There is none. It's zero. So this should be the easiest graph. I'll do it over here. Acceleration versus time. What's it look like? Oh, come on. Be confident. You know, what's acceleration? Actual value. Zero. Is it changing? Well, there you go. 
<laughs> it would look like that. It's zero. Make sense? So a graph of position versus time, the change you see is velocity, because velocity is the change in position over time. Likewise, a graph of velocity versus time, the graph will show you if there's any changes, that change represents the change in velocity over time, which is acceleration. Let's do a, another one then. This time, instead of having a car that runs by a battery with a motor, let's just roll something down. Here's a cart. It's just going to free to roll. What forces are acting on it as it's rolling? Gravity, friction, and a support force. Let's draw that first. A little free body diagram, a little picture to help us know what's going on. So let's see, from your perspective, we got that. Here's a cart. All right, we have, which way is gravity? Down. So that's a force, and it's the weight of it, right? You remember how to find weight? That's the mass times gravity. So there was one. Somebody said support force. Which direction do I draw that? It's not, you say perpendicular to the surface? Why is it not straight up? Right. <laughs> See, you had to learn how to say it, and now you, you got it better. Yeah, a lot of people, well, it should be straight up. It's, it's holding it up. Well, it's holding it up on an angle. Here, let's exaggerate. This is pushing it that way, perpendicular to its surface. I wanted to draw this because I had another couple demos. So we'll draw it this way. That's the support force or normal force. Same thing. Normal comes from, if something's normal to something else, it has a meaning of meaning perpendicular to. You know, when you step on a, a bathroom scale, here's one. All right. We got two forces, right? My weight is pushing down. What else is acting on me? I'm not moving down. So, yeah, the scale is pushing up on me, perpendicular surface. That's how it knows what your weight is and will tell you. So it's supporting me. That's the same idea with, a, say, a spring. This is a spring you can compress. So if I push on it, it pushes back on me. And so my hand feels the force from gravity if I just rest on there. And it scrunches it a little, compresses it. Because it's, it's, it's pushing back on my hand also to counter my hand's weight. That's supporting my hand. If I do it this way, it's still pushing against my hand, but in that direction. So, yep, we got support force. And friction. Which way would friction be? I haven't covered it explicitly yet, but I, which way is it trying to move? Point. Which way is the object trying to move? Okay, you're pointing that way. So, yeah, friction is that way. This is wobbly. Okay. So back to this guy. And let's do the same game to get an idea of his motion. So we'll start here. And I'll get ready. Hurt myself with the rope here. <laughs> and go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Eh, here ish. 
All right, so it started here. And after a sec, first second it's there, second second there, you get the idea, and you good scientists make observations. Tell me what you observe. See, look at everything you know. I heard three things that were all correct. The, 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 the position's changing clearly with time. So it's, it's, we already know it, it won't be a zero line or something. It's going to increase. It's going to go up. But in the first second, it only changed this much. In the second second, it changed this much. So it's, not only is it changing its position with time, it's changing how much it changes its position with time. Which implies it must be accelerating. Very good. So let's do those. That already kind of shows you the graph. So let's see. Position versus time. You started here. After one second, you go up some, right? But not, not much. After the next second, you go up. That would be the same amount. I'd put a dot there. But we know it went a little further, right? In the next one, that'd be the same amount further. It's going to curve like this. So it's still increasing, but not at a constant rate like that one up there. So what's the velocity? Is it constant? No, it can't be. Look at the slope. Let's use this. I don't know if you remember, the slope is a line, tan it's tangent to this line. So right here, it'd be like a line like this. That gives us the rise over the run. That represents the velocity. It's not going very fast at first. But up here, see how it gets steeper? There's more rise over the run. So the slope's greater, the velocity's greater. Does that make sense? So that tells us, since the slope is increasing, so is the velocity. So velocity with time. We know it's not going to be a, a flat line. Oh. It won't be flat. It must be increasing. So it'll do something like that. Which tells us this now has a slope, so we know that the acceleration is not zero, correct? It must be some value. That's what's constant. It's accelerating at constant. It has constant acceleration. Thus, velocity is changing. And so is the position, but more and more every second. There are some things that have a varying acceleration, and they get funkier. We, we won't go there. <laughs> but you can see that just from this, the spacing tells us automatically, boom, it must be accelerating. There, the velocity must be increasing in this case. What if we were to see something go the other way and have the same layout? It was moving that way, but in the first second it covered this position, distance. In the second second it went a little shorter and so on. What could you deduce? Basically, it'd be if I switched them, right? Going that way. Yeah, it's still accelerating because there's still a change like we saw before, but it's decelerating. Negative acceleration or acceleration in the opposite direction. Acceleration is a vector. So if the first one was positive, we'd say this one's negative. It's slowing down. All right, since we saw the thing actually roll downhill, this is what Galileo would do. And he actually put numbers to these. We, instead of doing them without numbers, he actually took measurements and figured this out. And what he came up with was the relationship, which is that the uh, position that it changes, well, I'll just write it. Uh, 
he realized that how he put this t together was he knew it was accelerating. We just did that in grimy detail. Some of you are bored, but you've got to sink this in because we're going to use forces and accelerations the rest of the semester. So he knew that the change in position was proportional to acceleration. And the acceleration in this case was due to what? What was actually pulling it down? Yeah, gravity. It was, there's a net force down the incline. This is pulling straight down. So there's a little bit of this directing it down the incline. But this is trying to hold it up and stop it from falling. And a little bit stops it. So there's a net force combining all these that we've done. I'm not going to do it right now because we haven't got the components drawing it yet, but we will. Bottom line, there ends up a little net force down the incline. You could have told me this already. Why? How, do you, how, do you, how can you say that, Adam? Because that has mass and inertia. It's resisting wanting to change, so the only way to get it to change and move is to accelerate it. And we saw that it was accelerated. So that it must have some net acceleration due to the combination of forces. So in this case, this would be net. But yeah, it all started because the Earth was pulling on it. The clincher here, the key with the Galileo work, is that this change in position was proportional to time squared. Those of you that have had maybe more algebra can see that. That's right here. That's not linear. It's not a straight line. What is it? You can plot this. And it's this equation. You notice that this, this position, where it's at, is directly proportional to time squared. He got that relationship. So he put these together and found this constant of proportionality. So essentially, this change in position was proportional to acceleration. This is a, a symbol the book uses and others do that means proportional to. I often use that, so I'll tell you now before I forget. Pro, por, I just forgot. Proportional? Proportional. Pro. <laughs> proportional. Two. And he also got that it's proportional to time, but squared from his experiments. It's exactly equal if you throw in this one half value. All right. Question? Let's do a table and then maybe a quicker question here. So, free fall. Is when you're only under the influence of gravity. So we don't have to worry about support forces. We don't have to worry about friction. We don't have to worry about air resistance. Free fall is just due to the weight due to gravity pulling on you. The earth pulls on you down. There's an attraction between all masses. If you uh, drop something, oh, that's what I forgot. Well, give me 10 seconds. I'll go grab a ball. We've done the tossing stuff. You just take something and drop it. I think you can see it's a lot like this. At first, over the first second, it doesn't fall very far. Then it falls further and further. It, it, it picks up speed. It's accelerating. And by the bottom, it's going pretty fast. That acceleration is all due to gravity. So, let's make a chart. <laughs> time, and we'll do that in seconds. This is in your book, in case you don't want to be frantically copying this down, in velocity. 
meters per second, distance per time. So at time zero, it's, we'll say it's a position zero. It obviously isn't moving. We're just going to drop it. So right here, as soon as I let go of it, after one second, what do we know? Yeah, it's changed its position. And can we determine how much? Yeah, how? Figure out the distance? We're, 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 that's what we're trying to figure out. Figure out the velocity first? We could do that. Yep. Yeah, there's your clue. I just gave it to you. Usually I follow up on myself. <laughs> that, that, that equation that guides our thinking would tell us how the position changed with time, wouldn't it? All we would need to know is what, how fast it's accelerating, right? The rate of acceleration. And do we know that? What is its acceleration? 9.8 meters per second squared. This is one where, in the homework, you might as well use 9.8. You got time, you got to calculate it. But right now, let's use 10. It makes our lives easier. Yeah, the acceleration in this case, is g, which is 10 meters per second every second. So after one second, how much will its velocity change? After one second, how much will its velocity change? All right, we'll break it down. Acceleration is 10 meters per second every second. That's its change in velocity with time. So how much does it change its velocity every second? 10. Do you see that now? It's got to change 10. All right, so if it starts at zero, it's going zero speed, right, velocity, how fast will it be after a second? That's, yeah, that one should be an easy one. It's going 10. So there, boom. Physics tells us that. Anything falling, anything under free fall. Here we go. 1,001. I know how fast it was going right there. 10 meters per second. 1,001. 10 meters per second. Right before I caught it. 1,001. Right there. You get the idea. What if I let it fall a second? Second. How much will its velocity change during the second? Second. 10. It's going to change that every second. It's, the acceleration's constant at 10 meters per second per second. So yeah, it'll change another 10. Since it started at 10, what will it end up at? 20, 30, 40, so on. So if something fell for four seconds, you know how fast it's going. What if you threw it down? And you let go of it at 50 meters per second. You chuck it down at 50 meters per second. After four seconds, how fast will it be going? 90. Because it'll increase 40. 10 every second. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it'll be 40 meters per second faster than when you let go of it. Now it's a. We, we can now look at this one three different ways. You can just plug into there. Let's, let's do one like that. The change in position is one half at squared. Change in position. One half, the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. And we've gone for one, whoop, one second squared, right? I pause. One half at squared. This value is 5. 5 what? Meters, it's distance. We used SI units, standard units, so it'll come out in the standard units. So yeah, this will have fallen five meters. So obviously, I'm not counting for a real second there. <laughs> Inception. 
We know how far it went in one second. It'll have gone down five meters and now be going 10 meters per second. Right? You can just plug it in. I like this way. Look at this. If it started out going, it wasn't moving at all. Initial velocity, an instantaneous velocity, right? At the end of the second, somewhere down here, five meters down, it'll be going 10 meters per second. A final velocity, also instantaneous. It was, it was going somewhere in between there during the trip, right? It got up to 10. What would you say the average velocity was for that first second of free fall? Who agrees? It's five. Not very many of you. So what are you thinking? You're thinking, I don't know. Tell us the answer. <laughs> Average velocity is if, if it was going that speed the whole time, it still would have went the same <laughs> distance. So over a second, how fast would it have to be going on average to go five meters? I will pause then. If we have, let's see, we have velocity is a change in position with time, and acceleration is a change in velocity with time. We can manipulate these. This, if you just rearrange it, the change in position is the velocity times time. Do you see how I did that? This is some algebra. Please tell me right now, don't be ashamed if you didn't see how I got from here to here, because we're going to do this a lot. Because I'll show you. Good, great. Good, you're farther along than we usually are. <laughs> and this one, you could do it again. You could say the uh, change in velocity is acceleration times time. These are also handy. They're the same thing as these. Just rearranged. So let's look at this one. If the acceleration is 10 meters per second, gravity, and we do that for one second, what's the change in velocity? 10. We, we did that. See it's how it's consistent? So some people just like plugging into formulas. It gives you the same answer conceptually. This one, the change in position is velocity times time. Think about it. If you're going... 10 meters per second at the end. Well, let's just pause. Let's say you're going 10 meters per second. If you travel for one second, how far will you go? 10 meters. Some of you might know distance is rate times time. Or velocity is distance over time. You've probably heard that before. So with this one, an average velocity, what would this need to be for one second to change five meters. This is going to be five. What will that be if that's one? Five. That, so you were correct. That's the average velocity. If you start out at zero and you end up at 10, on average, you split the difference, you were going five meters per second. And if you go five meters per second for one second, you'll end up five meters down. Does that make sense? Whoa, bummer. Okay. Um, so you can put you can do it either way. We can plug that in for two squared. Two squared is four. Four times gravity of ten is forty. Half of that is twenty. So after two seconds we should be down to twenty. Look at it the the other way. We start at 10, we're going 20 at the, at the end. What's the average in, during this second? Split the difference. You start out at 10, you end up at 20. On average, you're going in the middle, 15. So the average velocity for this second of free fall is 15 meters per second. You're going to fall 15 meters per second in one second. How far did you just fall? 15 meters, yes? Well, where were we at? We were at 5, we fell 15 more and ended up at 20. So this is consistent. 
Can anybody already that's getting this see where this one will be? Let's see, the average is 25. So for a second, we're going to call 25 more meters. Add that to there, you get 45. 35 on average here. Add that to where we were at, and you got 80. So physics can tell us how fast we're going, how far we went, where we'll end up at any given time. It can predict these things. That's how we use all this. Again, this chart's in your book, so you can reference it. Um, I think at, at this point, due to time, I will save the clicker questions. You get another day. <laughs> That's all right. I apologize for that. I think this was more important. Um, so I'll end with a story. Uh, made it to the Golden Gate Bridge you know, in San Francisco. First time I'd ever been there and seen that ocean. I'm there with my sister-in-law. and uh, She, of course, uh, hawks a loogie off the, uh, off the, over the, the railing. She spits off. Actually, she spit her gum out. Sorry. <laughs> in case she watches this on YouTube. Um, well, you're not supposed to do that. There's a sign that says it's illegal. But since she was already willing to do it, I got him at the physicist kicked in in me and I said, oh, I didn't know you were doing that. Since you're willing, because I was, I was too afraid to do it and get in trouble, she wasn't. I asked her to do it again, but she was out of gum, so then she spit. And we measured the time, how long it took from her to just, and it was just like, you know, letting go of something and letting it fall. We counted. We tried, you know, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,000 until we thought it hit the ground. We knew how long it took to drop. What could we tell from that? What could we deduce knowing these equations? Yeah, the distance. There, since I'm already up here. I wanted to know that, how high up we were. I knew what gravity was. 10, that was easy. Let's say it fell for three seconds. I don't remember right now. If that's three, three squared is nine. 9 times 10 is 90. Half of that, 45. Boom! I knew right then we were 45 meters up. It was some other value. but So I use that a lot. You got a well you know, with water. You can drop a rock. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Splash! You know how deep it is. Just by how long it took to fall. Because we know how fast it's accelerating. Questions? Yes? That's the thing. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> of course, we can Google and see how high it was, but I don't remember what part we were standing on. You know. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, look for the pre-lecture, at least by morning, so you can answer a couple questions before we meet on Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll post those. All right. See you then.